All right, welcome back to the top-down camera tutorial series brought to you by IndiePixel. All right, so in this video, we are going to walk through the coding up of the main functionality of this, this particular camera, right? All right, so what I want to do is jump over into Unity. All right, so here we are inside of Unity, and we got our script ready to go. We stubbed in all of our variables, and uh, if we take a look at the, the code here, we stubbed in all of our main methods. So all we need to do now right, is actually write the, the meat of this thing. So what do we want to do? So let's talk about this actually really quick. I always kind of like to think about what I'm going to do. Um, so I know I want a camera that is a top-down camera. I want to be able to rotate it to a certain angle so we basically follow it around at that particular angle, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the target. All right, first we're going to store that in a variable. Well, it'll already be stored for us in the target variable, but... Uh, then I want to find its forward vector, all right? So the forward vector is the blue arrow here. If you're not familiar with some of the, the terms I'm using here, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. All right, so that's the blue arrow. That's always pointing forward. So if we were to rotate this guy and we go into local mode there, it's always pointing forward. So we can always get that forward direction, okay? So we need to get that. We're going to get the position in world space of this particular tank. And then we're going to basically build a vector that, go, that uses that forward vector, but we're going to push it backwards multiplied by the distance variable right here. And then we're going to add another vector to that particular vector, right? So we're going to have a, we're going to draw a vector or build a vector that points out to the back here using this, this distance variable, okay? And then we're going to add another vector to that vector, all right, using vector 3 dot up multiplied by the height. And that, when you add those two together, what will happen is you'll get a vector that basically is at an, at an angle to the tank directly in back of it like this. It'll be up here somewhere. And we're going to visualize all this stuff as we go along. So hopefully that will make more sense. But I wanted to talk through it first. So let's go and do that. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get, the, we want to make sure that we have a target because if we don't have a target, then we're going to get a whole bunch of null references. All right. So we're, there we're checking for whether or not we have a target. We can also do, um, Something like this, you can say if not target, and then we just return. All right, I've seen it done both ways. So if you do that, then basically what happens whenever the update or start function try to fire this method and we don't have a target, it'll just exit out of the whole script and it won't do any of the code that's down here basically, all right? Now, if you're, we were to do it the other way, right, and say if we do have a target, then all your code would go in here, so. I just wanted to show the two ways, really. So let's do this way. It is a little cleaner. Uh, we also need a semicolon there. Alrighty. So the first thing that we want to do is get that world position. Okay. So let's create a vector three called world position, and we'll say this is the vector three dot forward. Okay. Times the negative distance. So we want the M distance here. Okay. And then we want to add the height. So we're going to say vector three dot up. All right. Times M height. And that will give us our first vector. So in order to view this, let's just make sure we, we didn't create any errors for ourselves. All right. So now one thing I always like to do is have the ability to actually visualize what my vectors are doing when I'm adding these things up. So what we can do really quickly is say debug dot draw line or ray. You can do either or I'm going to use draw line in this case. And what we're going to do is say we're going to start from the target's position and we're going to go to the world position. All right. And then we want to give it a color. So I'm going to just give it a, a red for now just so I can really see it. All right. So let's take a look at that and see what we get. Now, in order to see this particular um, vector, we actually have to hit play. So let's hit play. And there you can see our vector that we built. So what it's doing is it's actually taking the world Z, or the world forward, and pushing it back by this distance value. Okay. And then we're adding another vector together, because you can add two vectors together to get a height. And that gives me a position right behind this particular tank. Right. Cool. All right. So the next step. All right. Let's 
make ourselves a little note here. So we're going to say build the world position vector. Build world position vector. I'm going to be try to be a good programmer and make myself notes. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to rotate that by our angle, right? Because I don't want the let's hit play here. Because I don't want the camera to always be behind the tank. I mean, maybe sometimes you do, but I want to give the user of this component some options of where they want to position the camera. Well, maybe I want it right here, or maybe I want it right here, without actually rotating the camera. We're going to do this all through code, you know. All right, so in order to rotate a vector, we have to build a quaternion, okay? Now, don't be scared if that does scare you. It's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. All right, so we're going to build our rotated vector, okay? And I need to spell right. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new vector called rotated vector. Rotated vector. And in order to, to make this rotated vector, we need to take the current vector that we have, this world position vector, okay? And we want to multiply it by a quaternion, okay? And a quaternion represents a rotation based off the the z-axis, or the forward axis of the object in question, basically. All right, so what I'm going to do is say quaternion.angleaxis. All right, and I like to use angle axis a lot because all I got to do is provide it the float angle and then the axis I want to rotate on, so x, y, or z, right? So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is just throw in the m angle, okay? And then vector 3.up. And the reason why I want uh, dot .up yeah, let's do that here. Hold on one second. It's because I want to rotate around the middle of the tank here, right? So I want to rotate around the Y axis right here. Okay. And we're getting an error because I haven't finished the, the line of code here. All right. So then we want to multiply that by the world position. So we're going to say world position like so. And now we can copy this line of code right here. Let's draw another line over here. And this time we're going to display the rotated vector and color it green. <coughs> Perfect. All right. Let's let that compile and then we'll hit play. All right. Now we can see where we are at. Boom. There we go. So as I rotate the vector, all right, so remember the red is the world position. So that's that first step. And then we rotate it by a quaternion. So, and we're rotating it around that y-axis. So that's basically how that works. All right, so I definitely do like the 45 degree angle. Makes it feel like a one of those orthographic games, which is what I like. <clears throat> All righty, cool. So let's move on to the next step. And this actually is to make it move. So uh, you'll notice that if I drive the tank around, okay, the vectors aren't following along. Those vectors are just stretching, actually. And what we need to do is we actually, every frame, we have to add on the current position to those two vectors that we have, right? So in order to do that, it's really simple. All right, so let's move our position now. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so it's really it's really simple. So what we want to do is we want to get the the target position, okay? So, and then I just want to flatten it out in Y, so that way we don't get any undulations as the the tank itself goes up or down, okay? So I'm just going to call this the flat target position, okay? And we'll first assign this uh, from the M target dot position, and then to flatten it out, we just say dot y is equal to zero. Now this that means it'll always stay on the zero axis of the y direction basically. All right? We won't go up and down as we go over bumps or anything in our, in our terrain. All right. And then finally, I just want to build a final vector with all these things um, combined. So we're going to say final position is equal to the uh, flat target position plus the rotated vector. Boom. And I hate it when I do that. I always do that because <coughs> my fingers are moving faster than my pinky finger finger can hit the shift key. <laughs> um, 
All right, so. And then finally, yeah, let's just do the, the final draw. So we're going to say debug dot draw line. And I really didn't need to type it over again, but whatever. So we're going to do it again. Uh, and we want final position. And we'll color this one blue just so we can identify each one. And after that, all we need to really do is just assign the um, this final position to the transform position. So we're going to say this transforms position is equal to that final combined position that we did. All right. <clears throat> so let's do that and take a look at what we got. All right. I'm going to give the game view a little bit more space here. Let's hit play. And now you'll notice that, well, we are actually, let me select this camera here. There we go. We are actually at the right position. All right. And the camera is moving with the tank. And you can see now that we've, we're updating the, uh, the position of the combined vectors there. It's actually moving the camera around. But the problem is, is that we're not looking at the tank. All right. All, everything else is working just fine. All right. We're, we're not looking at this tank. So that's an easy fix. All we need to do is transform.lookat. Right. So say transform.lookat. <coughs> I mean, there's a tons of ways you can do this, but look at the, the quick and easy way to do that for sure. Uh, we want the M target dot position. Or you could use that flat target position too. Let's just do that. All right. Very cool. And now we should be all set up. So let's take a look. Boom. That's perfect. So now uh, we, we just need to really adjust the heights here. So that's pretty good. I want to go out a little bit farther. Adjust the height here a little bit more. And boom. We now have a cool little camera. So the last thing I really want to do before, I mean, you can leave it at that. But I want to kind of smooth it out, too. And we really don't need to be displaying all those vectors. They're really there just to help you out. So what I do is I just comment these out, you know, all the draw lines, right? Just comment all those guys. But I leave the code there just in case, you know, something happens and I want to show it again. Uh, you can write another function for all that stuff, too. But this is the, the quick and easy way to do it. So the last thing I want to do is actually smooth this out, okay? So instead of just directly assigning the final position to our transform position, let's actually use a smooth damp function. All right, so to do this, I'm going to need a private variable called private uh, vector three. I'm just going to call this the ref velocity. And really, that's just to store the, the reference variable you'll see here in a second. So we're going to take advantage of the vector three dot smooth damp function, OK? And you'll notice that it takes the current, the target, and then it has this ref velocity. It's storing the reference. So the I, I believe it's the delta or something like that, right? And then we have a smooth time. So what I want to do is put in the, the current, which is transform position, OK? And then the target is the final position, because we want to try to get to that position, OK? So final position. We're going to say ref and then ref velocity. I'm storing it in that variable. And then we'll do it something like 0.5f. So, and you can also add a uh, a variable. So we can say public <coughs> public float um, uh, smoothing speed. So m smooth speed like that. So I'll just uh, initialize it to 0 0.5 and get rid of that dash there. That's not good. Alrighty, so I'm going to copy that and we'll put that in place like so. Very cool. One quick note here, uh, you don't have to necessarily be uh, using these public, right? Because this, when you do this, uh, you're basically allowing everyone to access the top-down camera class and change these variables from other parts of code if you want. So there is a, another practice where we make all these private, right? And then we just do a serialized field on top of all these guys. I just don't do that for, for the videos here. I mean, I should probably, right? It's better practice. Uh, because if I make these private or protected, right? I'll just leave it private for now. I'm not going to extend this in this particular series. Serialize field, right? By doing this, we encapsulate our scripts and protect them from 
any other script changing this particular thing. So maybe we maybe we want to change. Um, Maybe we want to let other scripts change the height and the distance. You could write a property then for that to just allow them to set and not get, basically. It all comes down to design. But anyways, I just wanted to cover that. So that, that's you're going to see that uh, a lot more in like a more professional setting um, just because it's it's proper encapsulation of your, your scripts. Okay. All righty. So that is everything. So that should smooth this out. Let's take a look now. Awesome. So you notice it'll take a little bit more time to get to the actual target. So I'm going to set the height. And I should show you guys in another series how to make it so that when you're editing these things in, at runtime like this, it saves. That's one thing that I hate because I always forget. <laughs> right? I'm sure you guys have run into that as well. So let's do like 75. That's good. I'm just going to copy these values and stop playing and hit paste values. Now we're good. All right. So now you'll notice that we have a little bit of smoothing. And we could slow it down by adding more time. So it takes more time, right, for the camera to get to the position. Now you've got this interesting follow camera that has a long lag. So it does actually let the, the tank kind of leave the center a little bit more. And I'll do another video on the adding like a lead to it, right? Those are always good. Or maybe adding um, uh, or make the, the script take into account where the target is as well. So it kind of fits the two. It'd be kind of cool for this particular top down. I really just wanted to show you like bare bones. This is what you do uh, for a top down camera. Alrighty. So that is that. That is the basic meat of our particular camera. One of the last things I, I do like to do um, is draw some gizmos for this. So I can select it really quickly. So I'm going to do void on draw gizmos. Okay. And in here, what I want to do first is uh, I want to check to see if we have a target. So target. I know that I always have myself so I can easily draw a gizmos dot draw sphere. Uh, right away so I can just say transform dot position okay and we'll give it a radius of like 1.5 something like that um, so if we have a target I do want to draw a sphere at the target as well so I can see that okay so I'm oops I need to do gizmo excuse me <laughs> gizmo is draw sphere <clears throat> all right and we're going to do m target dot position at 1.5. All right. And then we want to draw a line. So um, basically what I'm going to do is draw the line first. So if you're familiar with, if you're not familiar with draw gizmos or on draw gizmos here or gizmos themselves, um, they do draw in order that you basically program them in. So I want the line and the spheres, I want the spheres to be over the line basically. So I'm going to draw the line first and then the sphere second, which will make the line look like it's underneath the spheres. Now it's not super important. It's just more of like a style, stylistic choice that I make when I, I'm doing these things. So I'm going to do a draw line. All right. And we're going to go from transform dot position down to the end target dot position. Like so. All right. Let's take a look at that. Very cool. Alrighty, and we have the little sphere. And now I just want to give them a little bit of color. So it allows you to select it. You can also come up here and just give it a a uh, icon. So that way when, that's weird that it's not doing it. It's probably because the gizmos. Huh. Anyways, that usually works. I'm going to move on here. So basically, I'm going to give this a color. So I'm going to say gizmos.color is equal to a new color. And the reason why I'm doing a new color is because I want green, but I want some opacity. So I'm going to do an opacity of like 0.25F, like so. There we go. Just kind of spruces it up a little bit. There we go. All right. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to do in this particular video. And then the next video in this series, 
I am going to make the, the tool for it so we can edit these properties inside of the scene view over here. So I always like making these things. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.